Here, we have been given a problem about a chain that is lying on the table and part of it is hanging down like this. So, a chain partially hanging from a table as shown is on the verge of slipping. See, this uh, hanging part is going to pull the chain down but that hasn't happened yet but it is about to happen. It's on the verge of slipping. And the coefficient of static friction is given to be 0 0.4 and we have to find the fractional length of the hanging segment of the chain. By fractional length, uh, we mean uh, you know whether the, a quarter of the chain is hanging or one eighth of the chain is hanging. So what fraction of the total length is hanging down so that uh, it is about to start slipping down. Okay. So we are going to uh, start by you know, considering uh, these lengths say h is the length uh, hanging uh, vertically down then the remaining length would be lying horizontally let us call it as l minus h where l is the total length and then we start treating these analyzing these two parts separately the horizontal part and the vertical part the vertical part is the one that is exerting the force and trying to initiate the motion while the horizontal part is uh, experiencing some friction so it is going to resist it. So these two parts uh, can be analyzed or should be analyzed separately. So we are going to start with a free body diagram of this vertical segment of the chain. Uh, let us say what are its basic properties. So we can draw a free body diagram here. Uh, of course it's not complete, we haven't yet uh, shown the forces but we will uh, start listing them here. So to start with let us consider the total mass of the chain to be capital N and the total length to be capital L. Therefore the part, uh, therefore the mass of this hanging part would be H, the hanging length, divided by L, the total length, that fraction of M. So let's show that here. So mass is going to be M into H upon L. And then of course we can multiply by G to get the weight. So that is the first force we are showing here, the weight of the chain and we just saw it is going to be Mg into H by L. Now this weight is not able to pull the chain down because it is held up by the connection here and that is going to exert some tension in the string in the upward direction. So let's show that this tension and uh, as it is mentioned here the motion hasn't yet started. So these two forces must be equal and opposite. So for equilibrium the tension T must be equal to this weight Mg into H by L. So this is a complete free body diagram of the vertical segment. There are no other forces uh, acting on this. So let's now move on to the horizontal part which is sort of resisting this motion. So we start by you know, placing this horizontal segment here and then we'll start showing the forces and we'll start listing them here like before. So to start with let's consider the weight. The weight is going to be the total weight capital M into G minus the weight of the vertical segment. So mg minus mg into h by l. That mg can be pulled out common. So we have 1 minus h upon l. In fact h upon l uh, is a fraction of our interest. So when we solve this and when we find this h by l, that's the thing we are looking for. Next, we are going to show the normal reaction coming from the table. See there is this downward force acting on the chain. But the chain is not sinking into the table. So something is keeping it from going down. And that is nothing but the normal reaction or the contact force coming from the table. So here is R which will be exactly equal because the chain is not going anywhere in the vertical direction. So it must be exactly equal and opposite. So Mg minus Mg H by M. Uh, now let us start showing the horizontal forces. Uh, there will be the tension here. And this tension on the vertical uh, segment and this tension on the horizontal segment are nothing but action reaction pairs of sort. Okay. Uh, I am saying of sort because they are not directly action reaction because otherwise they would have been in the opposite direction as well. But their magnitude at this point is going to be the same. So the tension experienced by this point of the vertical segment and this point of the horizontal segment are going to be equal. So this tension here will be uh, equal to this tension here. And this tension uh, would be trying to pull the chain in this direction and down the table. But there is something that is keeping it from it. 
and that is nothing but the frictional force. As we know, frictional force or the maximum value of frictional force is mu, the coefficient of friction, into the normal reaction. So let's show that uh, mu into r. And we can confidently say that this frictional force is going to be mu times r, the maximum value, because the motion is impending, it's about to happen. So the maximum amount of friction that is possible is already exerted. So, these are all the forces. Our free body diagram as such it is now complete. Now, let us analyze this. Uh, we will start listing the forces. So, frictional force is mu times r. Since r is this, we can write mu into mg into 1 minus h by l. Uh, then, we will write uh, or rather equate uh, for equilibrium this frictional force and this tension. So, this frictional force here is equal to the tension. But we have already seen the tension is mg h by l. Uh, interestingly, this m into g gets cancelled. So, it does not matter uh, whether it is just a thin you know, chain or a very heavy uh, chain, does not matter. Uh, what matters is the fractional length and the coefficient of friction. So, this mg can be cancelled from both sides and the equation is simplified to this. So, mu times 1 is mu, mu times h by l is equal to just this h upon l. And since h upon l is the fraction we are looking for, let us take it on one side like this and transfer everything to the other side. So, we get h upon l is equal to mu divided by mu plus 1. So, that is our answer. And finally, all that remains is substituting the value. So, mu is equal to 0.4, 1 plus mu is 1.4 which reduces to 2 by 7. So, 2 7th of length of this chain, if it is hanging down, uh, the chain will not slip. Anything even fractionally more than that and it is going to start sliding down. So, if we slide the chain just slightly further, it is going to slip down. 